Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. If you enjoy all things true crime and you like it delivered in a calm, rational manner and not all the drama, then I suggest you subscribe. And after watching and listening to this video, if you find you enjoyed it or learned something, please consider a membership here or on Patreon. You can also help the channel by smashing that like button. As they say, like, share, subscribe. And now without further ado, let's get started. The guys from the Behavior Panel have taken a look at Jen Soto's videotaped police interrogation, and they have come to some very interesting conclusions. I'm going to refer to them as the BP. So the BP began by pointing out that Jen started her chat with the police by using her bipolar disorder as a justification for sending Madeline off to bed with 37-year-old Stefan Stearns. Jen told the detectives that she was feeling weird all day Sunday, and to fix this, she needed to take her medication, eat, and then get a good night's rest. By offering this medical explanation, Jen is clearly trying to present this Madeline and Stefan sleeping arrangement stuff and her approval and encouragement of it as benign, as innocent, something she needed to do for her own well-being and mental health. This is a calculated move on Jen Soto's part. She's clearly thought in advance about what she's going to tell the detectives. So from the very beginning, Jen is aware that she's going to have to sell this story. And the best way to look like an innocent mother who's done nothing wrong is to make it a medical issue. The BP also pointed out that Jen is very tense, stiff, and nervous. She keeps her arms close to her body. This is a way to protect herself. The behavior panel guys also said that all of her inner brain power is going into what she's going to say. And the stakes couldn't be any higher because she doesn't want to implicate herself. And in the beginning, she also doesn't seem to want to implicate Stefan Stearns. By talking about her bipolar condition, this is Jen's way of justifying behavior she knows is not okay. And that is sending her little daughter off with Stefan Stearns to sleep upstairs in bedroom number four. And you'll notice that Jen tries to paint herself as a hyper vigilant parent someone who watches Maddie when she takes her medication. So Jen is hyper vigilant about watching Maddie take her medication, but she's not so hyper vigilant about sending her daughter, her 13 year old daughter, to sleep in a bed with a 37 year old man. So Jen isn't just trying to answer the detective's questions as best as she can. She's actually playing her own spin doctor. How to spin this so that I don't look like a bad mother and Stefan doesn't look like a predator. She can't really have him looking like a predator because she's the one who's allowed him into her home and she's also the one who sent him upstairs with Maddie that night. It was my bipolar symptoms coming up again that I just, I've been medicating myself for for the whole time. I realized I forgot to take my meds and I said, you guys, I need a good night's sleep. I need to take my meds. Um, I sent them to sleep upstairs in the best, in the guest bedroom so that I could get a good night's sleep. Uh, I just suggested that we all sleep together in the same bed together, but not the easiest person to sleep with. She rolls around, she punches, she kicks. She'll, we have a king size bed and she typically sleeps on one side and she'll end up on my side when we wake up. Okay. So I asked her, I'm like, no, please, I need a good night's sleep. Um, if you guys can go upstairs and let me sleep. Um, I had asked Stefan to take her to school in the morning. Well, what was Sunday? So Sunday you took your meds. What meds, if you don't mind me asking, what meds do you take? I'm like, well, how is it? Can it put you to sleep deep? Does it help you fall asleep? Or does it help regulate you? What what kind of happens when you take the bets? Um, so they do all of the above. Um, 
they make me sleepy, they help me stay asleep, and they help me function, so I'm stable okay. all day. Um, they only work well if I've got a good night's sleep and if I've eaten with them the night before when I take them, or the night I take them. Um, the, it's, the medication's called Gidon. Um gen Generic brand is called Ziprazidone. I took my meds. Per the behavior panel, Jen isn't confident about what she's saying, and they know this from her frequent baton gestures with her arms and her hands. They keep going up. She uses them a lot. She also covers her uterus genital area with her hands. Per the behavior panel, this positioning of the hands indicates Jen's need to protect herself. On the inside, she's struggling with guilt and shame, and this seems to indicate that she knows that allowing Stefan Stern's access to Maddie and time alone with her were not wise or safe decisions. When the clock is past her bedtime, she needs to go to sleep. Um, so I set that upstairs. I think he may have come down at one point to pee before bed, and then he went back upstairs. He uses my back restroom because the roommates upstairs don't want to share a restroom with a male. <laughs> yeah, so they just use, he uses my restroom. Um, Sorry, where did I do? Um, Sunday night he came downstairs, maybe overnight to use the restroom. Yeah, and then he went back upstairs and they went to sleep. Or, why did they do him to sleep? Okay. I don't know. I went to sleep. I was awoken up at some time. For the longest time, I've been saying he woke me up at 8 o'clock in the morning because I assumed he was taking her to school and getting ready for school. But in reality, I don't know what time he woke me up. The sun was out a little bit. It was still a little dark. Um, and I was very sleepy when I got up. I was kind of drunk. But he came in to walk the dog, to put the leash on the dog and walk him. With the dog in the room with you? Yes. So did he wake you up on purpose? It was just kind of like the causation of him opening the door and you realizing somebody was there? Yeah, the causation of him okay. putting the leash on the dog because the way the dog reacted, he gets very nervous and will urinate. If you put the leash on him too directly, you have to like be nice and talk to him. <laughs> yeah, he's a very <laughs> he's a nervous dog, yeah. So um, I got up to try to help him and he said, no, no, go back to sleep. I'm fine, I got this. And I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. So I laid back down and went to sleep. Um, Jen also describes Stefan as messy, a hoarder, and as disorganized, somebody who leaves her house cluttered. She paints him as a guy who doesn't help finance her and Maddie, and who isn't able to keep a job. Jen is, in these moments, basically pointing the cops toward Stefan. And in this way, she seems to be unconsciously, maybe, seeking justice for Madeline. Go upstairs to the guest bedroom upstairs because I just... Um, he's not a very clean guy. He's kind of a little hoarder and a collector. So just my house was always a mess and that was the way that I wanted it to look. Um, or the clutter just gave me anxiety. So, um... I asked him to go upstairs, and he did. Uh, and he lived upstairs until March, I'm sorry, until December of last year. And then he moved to Northport, Florida with his parents, but they had promised him a job, but that fell through. So we were in the process of trying to get him to come back up here to get his job back at Disney and for him to move back into the house for a little bit. I'm not sure long term. I know temporarily I was willing to accept him back. Was that something out of convenience for him? Because you. Um, a little bit of both. We missed him. Um, and I wanted to help him out, like make it easy, like give him a place, like a base, a base to start at, and then for him to start looking for something else afterwards uh, on his own. But, um, So 
So then there, your relationship with her was open. Obviously, she's a child. She's not going to share everything. Yeah. Um, with him, it seems like she has a very open relationship with him. They talk, they hang out. So it'd be okay with you if they went out and did things together outside if you were at work or something? So the living situation, the living situation with them, I'll be honest, seems weird. It's weird to me. She's got a bedroom downstairs. What's kind of the the mindset or the, the thought process, the communication you've had with Stefan about, you know, she's not going to sleep in her bed, but you guys are going to go sleep in the guest bedroom. So originally the plan was that all three of us were going to sleep in my bed together. Um, and I'm not just saying Sunday, I mean like... Oh, okay. So... I had had a rule. She wasn't allowed to sleep in his bedroom at all. Like, no sleepovers, no nothing. For a very long time. For years. Um... Since we're pausing... Yeah. What brought that on? Was that like a request of his? Like, if we sleep in the same bed, a request of hers, or you just saying? Me being super paranoid not to trust anyone. Um, for the longest life, even though he treated her well, I still looked at him, on, you know, like side eye, like making sure, like, is that normal? Is this okay? That, that was normal. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure that nothing was happening and that I was missing something, but I was. But, um, he never requested, I'm sorry, repeat the question that. Did you notice how she stumbled on that question? She says at first he never requested and then she stops herself. She will later talk about slumber parties and she's talking about slumber parties between Madeline and Stefan and it sounds like both of them were asking her if they could have a slumber party together upstairs in bedroom number four when they were gonna watch a movie that maybe Jen did not want to watch and she would say okay in that case just this one time you can go do that. Jen tries to say that these slumber parties only happened when Stefan moved into the upstairs bedroom after she and he broke up and he went up to rent that bedroom. Prior to that, they were all sleeping in the same bed, Jen, Stefan, and Maddie. But we know that the essay went on for years. So if Jen didn't know about it, then Stefan somehow had access to Maddie alone in a bedroom for several years. So I don't think Jen is being honest about that. She doesn't want to cop to the length of time this could possibly have been going on. And again, Jen will try to paint herself as a hyper-vigilant parent who was looking at Stefan with a side eye, trying to make sure nothing was amiss. So she's basically saying, I did my part, but he was simply too sneaky for me, too manipulative. She also says at one point that if Stefan wants something, he finds a way to get it. Jen also tells the detective that for a long time, she had a rule about this. And the rule was no sleeping alone for Maddie and Stefan. They cannot sleep together alone. Now the behavior panel guys were like, why do you have a rule for something that should never ever happen? Like that should just be unspoken. You shouldn't have to have a rule because everybody knows that's inappropriate. And Jen also implies that at some point she dropped enforcing that rule. Again, Jen says the slumber party stuff began in June of 2024 and it supposedly only happened a handful of time. But how do you explain then the 600 or so photos of Maddie and Stefan dating back two years on Stefan's phone? Do you think that when Jen says we missed him, that she means both she and Maddie missed him? 
Did Maddie have some strange attachment to this man because of how much he'd groomed her? I'm also beginning to think that they never watched a movie on Sunday night. Remember, he said that they watched, I think it's called Sister Act with Whoopi Goldberg. I don't think they watched any movie. I think that is Stefan trying to find an innocuous reason for him to be in the bed with Maddie. I bet that Maddie never had the pleasure of watching that movie that night. I'm sad to say that, but that's what I think. I also want to point out that when Jen says that so-and-so, I think the name was redacted, but I think it was Madeline, asked if all three of them could sleep in the bed together on Sunday night, and Jen said no because she was so tired. Could that have been Maddie maybe knowing that she didn't want to be alone in the bed with Stefan that night? And so she asked her mom, can't we all just, all three of us be down here together? And of course we know from Jen that she said no, she really needed a good night's rest. The behavior panel also said that when Jen uses her hands, both of her hands on her chest, it's a proclamation of innocence. She's trying to convince the detectives that she's innocent. She didn't know what was going on. And putting the hands up there on her chest goes with a lack of fluency. Everything she says sort of becomes disjointed. They also mentioned fading facts. Things like when she said, I was woken up at such and such time, but she trails off at the end. When people trail off like that, apparently it means they're not telling the truth. They know it's not true and they don't really want to emphasize it, so they sort of trail off quietly. So the living situation, the living situation with them, I'll be honest, seems weird. It's weird to me. She's got a bedroom downstairs. What's kind of the the mindset or the, the thought process, the communication you've had with Stefan about you know, she's not going to sleep in her bed, but you guys are going to go sleep in the guest bedroom. So, originally, the plan was that all three of us were going to sleep in my bed together. Um, and I'm not just saying Sunday, I mean like... Oh, okay. Yeah. So... I had had a rule. She wasn't allowed to sleep in his bedroom at all. Like... No sleepovers, no nothing. For a very long time. For years. Um, Since we're pausing, yeah. what brought that on? Was that like a request of his? Like, can we sleep in the same bed? Request of hers? Or are you just saying... Me being super paranoid not to trust anyone. Um, for the longest... Like, even though he treated her well, I still looked at him, on, you know, like, side eye, like, making sure, like, is that normal? Is this okay? That, that was normal. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure that nothing was happening and that I was missing something, but I was. But, um... He never requested... I'm sorry. Repeat the question then. So I guess I'm... And do you guys remember Jen talking in another interview about slumber parties and saying how she would never allow Maddie to go to another friend's house for a slumber party because there might be a dad there, there might be a brother there, and she couldn't keep an eye on Maddie over at those other people's houses. I find it so ironic that these slumber parties come up as well at home in the townhouse and she is willing to let Maddie have a slumber party with Stefan. I think throughout most of this interview Jen is trying to present something in a rational way that is irrational, something that goes against the grain that mothers should allow older men to sleep with their daughters. So I do wonder how much of what Jen says we can trust because clearly she has her own agenda. She's trying to protect her arse. I'm gonna leave it at that for today. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you next time on Bed Crime Stories. Now smash that like button.